Uh, so good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Zhao Yunshan, a uh, research fellow from the uh, ECE department. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, so uh, my topic today is uh, probing the thermal and the mechanical property of the low dimensional materials. Uh, here shows the outline. Mainly I'm focusing on the one dimensional material, uh, the wires and also 2D laden materials. <coughs> With the scaling down of uh, modern microelectronic devices, too much heat has been generated and become concentrated, which um, will impair the device's performance. Thus, the thermal management at the nanoscale is very important. And showing in this uh, circuit, the local temperature of the uh, printed circuit board can go up to 100 degrees C. So, for the bulk materials, uh, the Fourier's laws have been widely used for the for the heat conduction, which is put in this formula, where the uh, heat flux is uh, proportional to the is proportional to the thermal conductivity and the temperature gradient. While this law shows some violation uh, in the low dimensional at the scale that the uh, the dimension comparable to the Fourier mean free pass. So thus, in the low in the low dimensional, this uh, thermal conductivity needs to be re-examined. As for the nanostructure on the nanoscale thermal transport, uh, we usually put we usually put uh, uh, using the simple kinetic theory, which is put in this formula. Uh, uh, the thermal conductivity is proportional to the uh, uh, specific heat and also the phonon group velocity and the mean free pass. As shown in this uh, previous a lot of paper. Uh, when there is a lot of uh, 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 phonon scattering, the thermal conductivity for the silicon in this case decreases a few times. And also simulation showing by introduce the polarized structure uh, because of the phonon localization, the thermal conductivity can uh, uh, go down to uh, below the amorphous limit. Another effect coming from the nano structuring is, is for the uh, phonon, is for the group velocity. Uh, I show you this formula, V is the uh, average group velocity. Uh, by the simulation uh, for the for the nanostructure in the silicon nanowire, you can see the uh, group velocity group velocity become uh, altered. That's why it can somehow um, change the thermal conductivity. So uh, in my uh, experiment, uh, I choose the silicon because it's a very important uh, building bottleneck for the modern semiconductors. That's why I chose the silicon uh, nano wire. Uh, for the first uh, story in my study is uh, we try to uh, make it a porous light structure. Uh, we employ the metal acid chemical agent to make the silicon nano wire into porous like. I show in this uh, 3D tomography, uh, which is built up uh, by a lot of uh, 2D uh, TM image, which is shown in this uh, graph. Once I got the single porosity and the wire, uh, one intriguing uh, question happened to me is, can we get the porosity of the one single nano wires, like what we did for the bulk materials? Uh, the answer is, is yes. Uh, by employing the EB heating technique, which is developed in our group, we can employ the electron beam with uh, the SEM electron beam to heat up your nanostructures. Any temperature range, any temperature change can be probed and captured by the two to uh, some meters. But finally, the absorption power is put in this formula, where the temperature uh, rise in the left and the right, divided by the uh, thermal resistance of the suspended beam. So by this uh, formula, we can uh, use this formula to uh, deduce the porosity of one single porosity than the wires. Uh, especially with our platform, we can uh, probe the both porosity and also the thermal conductivity of the sing same single nano wires. Uh, that's why we uh, uh, fabricated a lot of uh, uh, silicon nano wires with different diameters on top of the mass devices. Uh, you can see the scale bar here is 5 micro. You can see the, uh, the thing I play with is happening in the nano scale uh, regions. So uh, this line showing the different silicon nano wire with different diameter. Um, then we use the absorption power law to uh, deduce the porosity of the silicon porous silicon nano wires. Uh, as shown in this uh, graph, we're showing the linearity between the absorption power and the cross section areas. So finally, we uh, deduce the different structure size dependent on the thermal conductivity. 
the, the random star is my data, and uh, we also compare with other people's work, including the silicon uh, net mesh and also polysilicons. As showing this formula, as showing this uh, Magenta's model, uh, where the where the all the parameter is uh, is uh, for the bulk. That's why we can see all the data is uh, somehow below of these models. When we look further into this formula, we can see the V is the average group velocity for the bulk materials. That's why uh, all the all the data is uh, somehow overestimate. Considering the porosity effect, which is uh, can inch, can change the group velocity by the one minus of porosity times the group velocity. After considering this effect into this model, we can see that open open doors is somehow um, somehow uh, near to the Magenta's model. For our data, for our uh, porosity, for our porosity kind of wire, we also consider this effect. Uh, but the question is, does really the 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 the, the group velocity become somehow softened? That's why we perform the Young's model measurement of the silicon and the wires. I think this curve is quite familiar for us because we are doing a lot of uh, EFM calculations. And uh, then we uh, measure a series porosity, uh, I mean, uh, a series Young's models of the different porosities. Finally, we put in this, in this graph, compare with the bulk crystal silicon and also bulk amorphous uh, silicon dioxide. From this graph, you can see the our crystal uh, for silicon nanowire is have the lowest Young's models. This lowest soaking, uh, this lowest Young's models can somehow change your group velocity. That's why we can see uh, the the thermal conductivity in our case is quite low. Uh, for the porosity in our measurement is uh, for the higher porosity, the Young's models is around 40 gigapa, while for the low porosity part is around 25 to 29 gigapa. In some cases, uh, in some real application, we want to change the thermal conductivity instead of just uh, putting its uh, low limit. That's why we employ the um, very, very normal uh, IR irradiation, which is called the helium IR irradiation, to change the thermal conductivity of the uh, single silicon and wires. Uh, finally, we put the thermal conductivity uh, irradiation with the dose in this, in this uh, graph. Uh, in this graph, you can see in the low dose region, the thermal conductivity drops sharply when when it uh, in the low dose. While in the with increased the dose, you can see the thermal conductivity become tilted off until it's finally saturated. While in the between, you can see there is some somehow sharp change in the thermal conductivity. So that's why we analyze why the relation change differently. In the low dose region, we believe it's a point defect generation and a point defect um, uh, concentration. By the calculation, we can calculate the dose dependent uh, vacancy concentration. Finally, we calculate around 4% uh, point defects can somehow decrease the thermal conductivity around 70%. Um, this, uh, this, this result can uh, show that the point defects is very uh, defective to, to reduce the thermal conductivity. While at the higher uh, dose regions, uh, we can rest by the TM because uh, uh, TM is very uh, easy to calculate the uh, silicon and wires. In the critical points, in the critical uh, dose, you can see there are some uh, amorphous ring in the in the in this insert. Uh, with increase with increase the dose, the the. Defects, the defective crystal silicon can collapse into amorphous uh, until the energy barriers between the crystal silicon uh, to amorphous silicon overcome. That's why once there are a lot of amorphous happening in the crystal silicon, uh, it will defect, it will scatter the photons greatly. That's why we saw some drops in the just now graph. And also you can see the interface between the amorphous and crystal is very sharp. This interface uh, give us a hint that we can re-modify the irradiation conditions and also to probe the uh, the uh, phonon transport, the heat carrier transport across the interface. This this part is crystal. This part is crystal. While interface in the in the middle part is the amorphous. So with the HIF irradiation, we can create a 
crystal amorphous crystal critical structures in the one dimensional. Uh, with using the our uh, EBM technique, we can probe the uh, intriguing uh, thermal transport across the interface, and also what happens, and uh, also in the middle part. I mean, in the amorphous region. The final result showing in this graph. Um, from our result, we can see that uh, with the dimension down to 30 nanometer, it is still diffusive because the thermal resistance is linearly uh, increased with the length of the amorphous regions. And also, the interface thermal resistance is independent with the length of the amorphous regions. This result is very uh, interesting. Another thing is, uh, another topic is uh, I probably is the 2 d layer uh, black phosphorus. Uh, black phosphorus is very interesting because it's so very higher uh, mobility, uh, which is a uh, potentially application for the uh, nano electronics and the nano photonics. Uh, and also, it shows the layer tunable battle gap from 0 0.3 to 2 uh, EV from the bulk to the mono layers, uh, especially because of uh, its uh, spunked structure. So uh, there is a, a very intriguing implant anisotropy for both electron and photon transport. That's why we can see the. That's why the simulation predicts the the the, the thermal electric for the different direction is different. For the zigzag, the the figure of merit the DQ value is around five to six times larger than that of the armchair directions. While just for the photon, I mean the thermal transport itself is very intriguing. A lot of people have published. Uh, about this uh, entropy thermal transport. As shown in this uh, AEM paper, uh, I remember it's uh, 2015. Uh, in this paper, they believe the entropy implant, implant thermal transport entropy is coming from both phono uh, dispersion relation and also from the, 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 the relaxing time. While this argument is, uh, is uh, discussed in this uh, later on paper, where the people believe, um, the author believe the entropy is not from the it's not dominated by the relaxing time, while it's mainly coming from the uh, the dispersion relation. While this argument is a little um, violated, people believe this entropy transport is dominated by the by the group velocity instead of the instead of the relaxing time. From all of the previous uh, study, you can see it's really challenging to distinguish whether. Uh, it is the entropy uh, thermal transport in the black buffers is coming from the group velocity or is from the phono relaxing time. That's why we designed this very uh, uh, intriguing uh, experiment. We 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 categorize the black phosphorus flakes by the Raman categorization uh, to categorize is a uh, different direction. In this case, it's uh, armchair. This case is a uh, different directions. We edge the we edge the uh, black phosphorus split into the uh, nano ribbons. Uh, why we do this? Because we want to uh, transport a single nano ribbon on top of the uh, mass device, which is for the thermal conductivity measurement, another is for the Young's Morris measurement. So finally, the thermal conductivity measurement is put in this graph. Uh, the, for the different thickness, uh, we can see the entropy ratio between the two directions is quite similar. Uh, and also we perform the temperature dependent thermal conductivity measurement for the different uh, direction uh, nano ribbons. Um, so we also perform the Young's models to measure the uh, mechanical property of the nano ribbons. Uh, after transferring the nano ribbon on top of the on top of the whole structure, we fix the its two ends by the by the focused IB to make it well contact. Uh, this graph is uh, similar with previous because we it's quite familiar for us. We use the, this formula to to deduce the young smallest of the merit uh, nano ribbons. Finally, I put the thermal connectivity uh, value compared with the young smallest value put in this formula. From this graph, you can see the young smallest uh, ratio between the armchair and zigzag is quite similar to that of the. Uh, some connectivity ratio between the, these two directions. From this graph, you can see the the dominant rule of the entropic thermal transport happening in the black sulfurs is coming from the group velocity instead of the uh, relaxing time. We also performed the first principle calculation um, to show uh, the ratio between these two directions. 
uh, the attitude, the the group velocity ratio between these two direction is compared uh, both the both the thermal connectivity ratio and also the Young's modulus ratio, um, which double confirm what we measure is correct. So finally, I. My conclusion is here. In my study, I probe two uh, different platforms. One is the nano wire, the other is the 2D laser blast photos. In the first story, I probe, probe the porosity of one, city, one uh, single porosity nano wire, and also we show that this ultra low thermal connectivity uh, is is coming from the uh, softened group velocity measured by the Young's modulus. And also, we generate a serious point defense concentration in the in the silicon and the wire, and we show the diffusive thermal transport in the amorphous silicon. Even the dimension is go, go down to 30 nanometer. For the entropic black ball first, uh, we measure by the uh, we measure the both the thermal connectivity and the Young's modulus of the single of the of of the different direction direction black ball first. So here I want to acknowledge my collaborator who's coming from, who's from for the uh, experimental collaborator and also theoretical uh, collaborator. So that's it. Thanks. So any question? Yes. What value? Absolute value. So I'm expecting a silicon wire with a lower gigapascal. It's lower. Yeah. So I'm expecting that such a process bound on the material that was processed a different velocity will be lower compared to the Yes. Because in the nanoscale uh, from the calculation, because the nanoscale have a higher surface to volume ratio. And also the surface atom is uh, a free body. That's why we believe the theoretical predict that the, the mechanical body is weak for the nanoscale. That's why we predict the nanoscale policy can have a lower young model compared with the bulk one. This value will be taken as the material value of the structure. So sorry, I didn't. It will be a more towards the material body. Uh, material, material property. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What we did is uh, we we uh, using the EF calculator to keep to to uh, do the area scan. Yeah, this this uh, separation dependent if if uh, deflection force is coming from the EF model. Yeah, there is a formula to using this uh, curve to extract your smallest value. So you apply the load on the wire. <coughs> we we uh this uh, we put the force all for all the area, but we put the the mid point in the in the suspended B for extraction of the Young's models. So it's like what you mentioned in the later part of your presentation is like three point method. Yeah, three point method. Three point means fix the two ends, probe the using the 
tip to prop the property. So how do you design the way the tension? How do I? Uh, yeah, that's why we uh, pick the hole is uh, uh, small and also put the, the length is small while the width itself, the net wire is, uh, is, uh, is larger. That's why we can import, we can use the, that formula to extract the as well as. Of course, because the gravity, uh, because the suspension of the net wire, there are some curve like structure. Yeah, that's why we uh, why for this uh, for this curve, it it's showing that this point is coming from touch your surface already. Yeah. <coughs> Hope I ask <laughs> your question. Yeah. Yes. Um, also have a naive question. So I, I I don't know if you are based on DMT module to get the dance modulars or what, any other module module uh, just as that. Uh, you need a, the same uh, slide, the same slide. Yes. yes. So, so I, uh, I just get if you are use the DMT module to get the final yes modulus. Actually, this uh, module is based on the effective, uh, effective yes modulus. Uh, finally, if you want to get the yes modulus of this uh, nanoware, mm. maybe the Poisson ratio is needed both for the teeth and this underwear, as well as if you want to quanti uh, quantify this value, I think the contact area is also important. So if you make any measurement for the Poisson ratio of the teeth or the uh, underwear, as well, how you control the contact area to get the final... The so contact control. area, you mean the teeth with your yeah, sample? Contact so this, this, because to quantify the uh, Young's modulus is always uh, limited by, uh, also lim uh, always limited by this contact uh, condition sometimes. So uh, in, in my case, the, the wire, uh, the, the diameter is uh, uh, more than 300, 300 nanometer. I think it's, uh, compared with the contact area, should be very large, right? Like, uh, three three nanometer. Three hundred, three hundred nanometer. Yeah. So yeah, it, this uh, diameter is, of course, it's larger than your radius of your tip apex. Yes. Right? Yes. So yeah. So if you want to make uh, the quantify of the 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 Young's modulus, the final contact of your sample surface with your tip apex. It's very important. Mm, yeah, I agree. Maybe it's yeah. very common. Because we also do a similar uh, the experiment we find. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's always quite difficult to uh, reproduce such, to get the repro reproducible uh, value of the Young's modulus. This is always a very large challenge for the, uh, That's the, good. Of course, mm. for the quantify of the mm -hmm. nano mechanical mm -hmm. property. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that effect is uh, we also, every time before the environment, we do the calibration. We have the uh, standard uh, silicon, every time we, before our porous silicon nanowire environment, we use the like around um, 160 nanometer silicon nanowire for calibration until we got the 160 gigapart for the silicon. After that, we do the re real measurement for the porous silicon. So, but uh, uh, yeah, you uh, you are maybe the contact area is a critical parameter for the extraction. Yeah, I agree with you. So, uh, so yeah. I just curious, so if you also find or <laughs> maybe our experiment is different from yours, so I just curious about your uh, experiment. <laughs> yeah, that's why for all the measurement is uh, for um, like at least the uh, fuse and the wire until we got the same constant value. Yeah, yeah, maybe later we can discuss more. Yeah.